Thing. Do a little thing. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yo, you're in the back room. Back room. You're in the back room. It's the Mike and Bo show. He's the digital god who likes to shout down. Yo, he is the guy that's on the Twitter, Facebook, don't do the Instagram. Yo, you're the Mikey. You count the town. You got Mikey. <laughs> oh my God. That's yeah. how we start this podcast. It's the back room. Welcome to it. It's uh, another show. Uh, this show is. We kind of just made it up. So if you're listening to this, thank you for listening. And it's basically checking out what the alumni are doing, what they're up to. Yeah. Mikey, you are the first in line, the digital god. Yeah. And obviously, you're the closest to a Muzi because you work at a Muzi. So we're excited about that. Uh-huh. And um, the idea is just to get to know all of our alumni. Mm. and put it out there and you know it's for the alumni but it could be for some other people as well yeah. and uh, yeah I just wanted to find out where you are in life man so yeah. welcome to the show dude oh thanks thanks and hello to everybody who's listening yeah man so let's talk about Mikey um, and what Mikey so you, you grew up in this little space in Limpopo and there's this this Limpopo theme that's coming out now a lot of creatives coming from Limpopo <laughs> area yeah um, from Toho Yando. Toho Yando. Toho Yando. Yeah, the head of an elephant in translation. Toho Yando. Yeah. That sounds a bit like, and I'm not, you know, this is me being as racist <laughs> as I can be. That sounds a bit Chinese, eh? Toho Yando. Toho Yando. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. You know, this, this, this language is, I'm sure, they, you know, they come from a lot of places. So I'm sure maybe vendor people maybe pass by China I'm sometime. I'm telling you, dude. I'm telling you. And then Toho we have Yando. that, you know, that vibe when we pronounce Toho Yando, it sounds like Chinese. <laughs> All right. So talk to me about this, this Toho Yando. Yeah. What was it like uh, growing up there? Ah, Tendo is a very small town. Yeah, um, uh, it, it it it's like an urban town, like an urban modern town away from the village, you know, in Limpopo. And it was like a very challenging place to live in because most of the things are there, but then it's just that challenging part where you need to get them, like you know, education, you know connectivity because i myself is into social media so those type of things were like you know some of the things that were restricted upon uh, for for me when mm-hmm. i was in tando but yeah it's a very cool hood um very developing some, some things are just starting out in tando because yeah people don't have the resources or the information they need to start you know great um you know creative things or uh, developments for people living in tando so how does a guy who is passionate about digital right um who's uh, from a town called the head of an elephant get into digital so hectically in in uh, in in this present day like what what was the what was the moment what happened how oh. did you get from tohoyando to johannesburg Cool. So, um, uh, grade 12, yeah, when I was not accepted from any university, any bursary, that was like hell for me. I was like, what? I've got good marks, but then none of those universities accepted me, you know? Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, I need to come to a decision whereby um, looking at home, things are getting tough because I just lost my father when I was in grade 11. So it was on my hands now to maybe use myself as a motivation or as a sacrifice for my family to have a better chance of living. You know, so I had to take a decision to come to Johannesburg because I, yeah, I've been, you know, everybody has been sold that dream. Yeah, Johannesburg, you come there, you gotta get everything you need. It's like, uh, <laughs> you know, that type of dream. So I was like, okay, cool. Let me take this decision and sacrifice my life, my time. I don't even know anybody in Johannesburg. So I took... You knew no one. I didn't know anyone when I came here. Yeah. So, yeah. I just decided to take my last money. Like, I had, I think, like, yeah, 200 bucks. I bought a ticket. I think it was, like, 160, 170 something. And I only had maybe 30 bucks to eat on the way. Yeah, I arrived here in Johannesburg. Cool. Um, Where do we sleep now? So I got no place to sleep, so I have to just see where I can sleep. But hold on, what was the idea, Mikey, here? Mm-hmm. You, you, you you have 300 bucks to your name, right? Yeah. Or 200 bucks? Yeah, 200 bucks. 200 bucks to your name. Yeah. And a ticket is 160, so you got 40 bucks now. Yeah. Like, what were you thinking in terms of, oh, how am I going to survive in Josie? Well, my ultimate goal when I decided that I'm going to go to Johannesburg to find a better opportunity was... 
yeah um it has to take me all if i have to get hungry to get something let let that happen if i have to go sleep in the streets for me to get something let let that happen so i just came with that ultimate goal that it doesn't matter what happens on the way but then i have to reach the destination yeah okay so you arrive in jersey you arrive in the bustling streets of johannesburg downtown yeah uh park station park station park station and yeah. then what happens Oh, well, Park Station, yeah. How many bags do you have coming into well, Jersey? Well, I have uh, this bag, like uh, the one that my mom used to own. It's like this black bag, like small little bag. Get my clothes in there and yeah, my toiletries and yeah, my books that I was reading along the way. And yeah, when I arrived here... Ah, I only had that 40 bucks that we calculated right now. And yeah, I just went and bought food because I didn't eat along the way. Because yeah, I just had to sit down and watch people eat while we stop and take a break. And yeah, on that 40 bucks, I bought food and I had to find a place. So I had to ask around, where is a place I can sleep? You know, I don't have money, you know, asking security guards, asking people for money. You know, just for me to get maybe something to eat tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um... I think I stayed for uh, like three weeks in Park Station when the same routine, you know, asking money, buying food, asking money, buying food. I was like, shit, nah. So you were begging on the streets? Well, yeah, I was like begging on the streets, I guess. Like, yeah, there was like a place called the Cook House in Park Station Mm. where where I used to go there. And you can put your stuff away, right? Well, yeah, I used to put my stuff away there and then just get some food. And yeah, that's where I used to get my money from people. Uh, They were, you know, chilling, waiting for bus, for buses, you know, to travel. So, yeah. But yeah, when that routine was happening all along for three weeks, I decided that uh, uh, I'm not here to beg on the streets. I'm here to get a uh, uh, better opportunity. Um, and that's why I came here. So I need to make that decision right now and go find that opportunity. I decided to go find help on some community uh, i forgot the department department of community and safety i think Mm -hmm. in bramfontein uh there was a social worker there i talked to we had a session and i explained all that i just told you right now yeah that i'm coming from vendor matric you know not accepted and family and deep you know deep shit and i'm trying to survive and stuff then she referred me to a shelter in uh, hillbro yeah hillbro bram yeah um next to constitution hill yeah that's where i used to stay the i was admitted maybe two days later of her and me uh, having a session and i lived there for like um i think a year yeah i think from 2015 to 2016 january yeah that was a year and uh what are you doing in this year Huh? What are you doing in this year that you, you lived there? Um, so, uh, on that year, I was doing nothing. I was still doing the same routine that I was doing in Park Station. So, I'm trying to get accommodation right now. I'm trying to search a lane in the city. So, trying to see what I can do so that I can have accommodation and see means of trying to get an opportunity at the same time. So, I stayed there for maybe a year. Yeah, I stayed maybe, I think I arrived here around March. And then, uh, I think I left here around December for 2016. Yeah. And then in the time of uh, being in the shelter, I hustled an opportunity around Bramfontein and I bumped into Love Life. And um, yeah, Love Life, uh, like fortunately, someone was living on the peer motivation program, their leadership. And then they happened to, they happened to, to intake me because I was there for like, two weeks uh, I was like volunteering and they saw a need of a person to replace and they took me in because of my situation also so yeah for the rest of the year I was with Love Live made a lot of contacts and I ended up being the national ambassador for Love Live Hmm. and yeah so you you you're the national ambassador for Love Life. Yeah. Um, getting any money at this point? Well, well, Love Life is a non-profit organization. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, it's all about motivating young people to reach their dreams and live healthy. And I'm just that person who's ushering the word. So sometimes when Love Life has like uh, events, I go there and usher some word for the young mm-hmm. people to get motivated and you know just to get it, get back on track or knowing what is healthy living and yeah hmm 
Mikey. <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> so you, you, you're building up a little bit of a reputation now in yeah. Johannesburg. You're the national ambassador. Is this when you start falling in love with uh, digital? Yeah, so with my time when I was like a national ambassador for Love Live, um, I went to the national head office quite often because mm-hmm. they were like, yeah, that's where we used to meet and do some a lot of workshops and meet a lot of people. Um, I was offered an opportunity. Actually, I approached the guy who was running the publication for Love Life. So Love Life had a magazine. Like it has an in in house magazine for young people. So it covers stories about young people doing good stuff mm-hmm. in the communities, you know, young citizen journalists, you know, all this type of stuff. So I was op- offered the opportunity to work on their own social media mm-hmm. and also to also write on their you know uh, latest updates on, you know, maybe HIV and AIDS and all those type of things that surround Love Life. So that's when I got the opportunity to fell in love with um I mean, to fall in love with social media, which was like, yeah, that's where it started, I guess. Because I think I was really, like, a person who was addicted to social media. But Mm -hmm. then I think, like, okay, cool. How can I turn an addiction into a career that can generate money for me? What what, you know, like, now you're in the love life space and... and Here's here's a here's a boy from from the the elephant's head deep far away right and you got to support your your family yeah. uh, back at home. What's the first thing you know once you started getting money right? Uh-huh. And there's different types of hustles uh-huh. in in South Africa. Yeah. Your first hustle was you know sleeping and eating. The next yeah. hustle is okay now I'm gonna start surviving. The next hustle is striving. Yeah. You know. So you're now in the surviving space. What's the first thing you buy for yourself? <laughs> Once you start getting money, like, uh, <laughs> like, and I'm not talking about food. Okay. I'm talking about like, what's the first thing you're like, oh my gosh, I can actually afford to do to buy this. Yeah. What is it? I'm um, looking back. So I like on the stipend that I was getting from Love Live, I bought myself uh, a pair of jeans and sent some money at home because yeah, like I really needed clothes. Like yeah, didn't have any clothes. Like uh, clothes were running out, so I, like went for a little, a little uh, like shopping yana for the clothes. You know, <laughs> buy some pants and t-shirts. You know, just to look good because you're gonna be working with young kids and gonna be you know making fun of you if you're wearing some stupid clothes. And yeah, so I was like, okay, cool. Let me save up some money and then just get some you know something that I can wear every day and look better and feel like I'm part of the people who I'm working with. You know. Yeah. So so you move from from this space of being a brand ambassador for Love Life into the digital space. Yeah. You also now know about Kudu and Lions. You, you, there was a game ranger <laughs> thing going. What was going on there? What happened there? Okay, like, so well, why did this change? You know. So after Love Life, at the end of 2016. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my contract with Love Life was done. So yeah, Love Life was like, "Cool, we helped you. Now you go see the world." I was like, hey, "Cool." Me, let me see if I can see the world. And then fortunately, I bumped into someone um, who I approached during my graduation at Love Life mm-hmm. for my learnership because we graduate. So we go to boot camp, close in boot camp, and then we reflect on our journey past um, Love Life. And uh, the person who I met at the at the venue i talked to them like no dude i might need an opportunity here because i think my contract with love life is ending Mm -hmm. so that guy i think he was listening he was very serious he's like hey dude you still have that opportunity like yeah 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 i need like people for december because we're gonna have a lot of visitors and stuff like oh yeah cool i'll call you and then yeah i gave him a call and he told me when to come and then yeah i was working as a tour guide because it's something affiliated with love life so i was more of a facilitator so giving tour guys and telling you about the place. So it took like a one week workshop and after that um I was in and then Where was this? Northwest. Um uh yeah. Oh, what's that place? It's uh, it's it's a famous place, man. I forgot the name of that place. It's um the game reserve? It's in the like uh the hood. It's in the farms of Northwest. Uh like there's a lot of manufacturing. Well, you know me, I know. Ah uh, well you're well, from the yeah, well, <laughs> you're white. <laughs> You know about the land? Uh, <laughs> look at this guy. Look at this guy. Where's the land? Still asking. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I'm sorry, man. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. I uh, was there for like facilitating there. Yeah. 